Hey guys, I hope you all are enjoying your day off. To those of you who may have a day off, um, I wanted to get right into something that had been laid on my heart to speak to you all about. You know, I recently had the opportunity to sit in on um, a live, um, I guess it was just a platform of pastors and they were talking about a lot of things that's going on in the churches and the society. And um, I want to tell you that throughout that hour or that time that I was listening to this thing, I was very, very uh, surprised how very little Christ was brought into the equation. Um, they came from a very intellectual and practical standpoint, which we have intelligence. God gave us that. They had a lot of knowledge about, you know, politics and society and all, you know, the social stratification that's taking place and, um, you know, the, the economic status of uh, certain demographics and just the country, society, the world on a whole. And this is good. But very little was said about Jesus and his power. You know, all the solutions and the possible solutions were all geared into increasing finances and things of that nature. And when one pastor got up there and said, listen, if we seek God first, all things shall be added and and um, that our battle is not against flesh and blood. And the reply was not a, it was not in any way disrespectful, but what was kind of my impression of what I got from it was like, yeah, you know, we can talk about spirituality, which spirituality is important and knowing God is important, but you know, we can talk about spirituality and, and we can say that. And that's why people's kind of lost today because all they're doing is, you know, dealing with the spirit and not the practical. And, you know, we could be so heavenly minded. We're no earthly good. And the, I don't think they totally snubbed, uh, Christ or the ability of God, but it was just like, yeah, you know, we need the spiritual, but at the same time, so it was sort of like an afterthought and listen, we got to do the practical stuff and throw spiritual stuff in there. And if you get too spiritual, you're going to miss out on the natural. And, uh, it, shocked to me really because as I sat there and I listened I'm thinking man this is no different than you know when I'm listening to like maybe a group of individuals um, on CNN talking and just different point of view um it was quite different and I went to God because I'm like you know Lord these are all pastors and preachers and I mean, there was more to it, but it's just too much to get into. But the bottom line, what I could see was that my impression was, listen, the power of God and and walking in the spirit was uh, a thing of, of old. And, you know, you got to just come up and get your finances and get your money and get your people and get your connections. And yeah, it's good to be spiritual, but this is what we got to do. You know, like this is more the forefront because that was pretty much the topic of the discussion. And I went to the Lord and I prayed about that because I was like, wow, these are men behind the pulpit. And one of the things that the Lord told me is, this is why we're seeing so much of the carnality and so much of the self and uh, so much of, yeah, so much of self front and center in the body of Christ and because it comes from the top on down and one of the thing is that a lot of people have lost um, the true reverence of God and his abilities you see the stories or, or the occurrences the things that occurred with God parting the Red Sea and dropping um, a manna from heaven and Jesus laying hands on the sick and raising the dead and doing all those things. The power of God has become somewhat of a, uh, a folk tale. 
And a lot of people say, well, no, that's not what we're doing. But it has become that because when you can actually say, well, yeah, we know about spirituality and all that, but this is what we got to do. No one truly believes that if you do the things of God first and everything else will be added. I mean, that's really what it boils down to that. It's not about seeking first the kingdom of God. It's not about spiritual wickedness, heavenly place. It's not about getting out there and and telling people about Jesus Christ and making that a priority and trusting him that everything else will happen. Now, granted, yes, you have to go to work. You got to wake up in the morning. You have to go where you got to go. You can't be asking God for help. And Lord, I believe you for this loan, but you don't get up and go to the bank. Uh, God, I'm believing you for this loan, but you don't have your, your, uh, you don't have your ducks in a row. You know, to make your, you don't fill out an application. God, I'm believing you for wealth and, or I'm believing you for the increase, but you don't get up and go to work or you don't look for work. Okay. So yes, in that sense, you must do things from a practical standpoint. You must take those steps. But what I'm talking about is a fact that before you're seeking the loan and you're seeking all these different things, that you are actually going before God first. You're realizing that, yes, I want a house, I want this, I want that. But the things of God is priority. If I put the things of God first, then everything else shall be added. And a lot of people are not doing that. There's also a lot of people, God gave you a vision and he said, okay, I want you to open a church and I want you to do this. But... You went on board with it, but maybe you stepped out ahead of time. He didn't tell you to open a church or open this business right now. And then some of you have open churches and things of that nature when he didn't tell you to do it at all. Some of you have, he gave you a place and, but because you, you're looking over at the next person, you want what they have. And so you expand and you get yourself a bigger building, a bigger loan and, that wasn't his will. Then there's some people, God, you, you wanted to, you want to get a house. God's blessed you. But instead of getting a house that God has given you a starter, maybe something that's, you know, not so many square feet, you went and bought yourself something big and grand because you want to keep up, you know, with sister dollars. You understand? So a lot of times people put themselves in situation to which now they have become a slave to it, trying to pay for it, trying to keep up with the mortgage, trying to keep up with the car payment, going through hell with that husband or that wife that you weren't supposed to be with at all or at that particular time. Or you're beating people down in your church to give you money for things that you decided to acquire on your own and he didn't tell you to do it. You see, God's power... God is still moving in the same power, the same capability. He's still working the same miracles. These miracles are being done in, you know, with people individually. And it's also happening in other countries. Why is it different? Because their priority is different. You understand? There's so much stuff to distract us here that if you're not really leaning into the things of God, you're going to get lost. So there's a lot of people, especially here in the United States, there's so much here. Even if you poor, you got a lot. You understand? There's so much things you could get into that people lose focus on God. People just don't believe in the power of God anymore. There's a lot of people, they, you know, people will, will kind of um, downplay the power of God and spirituality and walking in the power of his might because they don't experience that anymore. And truly what they're speaking is a truth to them because they don't experience his power. A lot of them has lost the first love that they had when they first got saved. So they're no longer walking in that. They no longer ex experience his power. They're no longer spending time in the word of God. They're no longer spending time to seek God out. They're normally seeking God out on a go on an app. And so they're not experiencing his power and then they're drowning in the, the wealth that they created for themselves. You see, because the wealth that comes from the enemy, from Satan, is a wealth that you can never get enough and you got to keep working for it. You're on a hamster wheel running to keep up with it. There are all these threats of how it could possibly get, could dwindle and you have to keep running and rushing for it. What God gives to you, it has no sorrow. What is for you is for you. And when you're seeking God, when you are going out there and you're seeking souls, seeking the, the widows and seeking those who are been thrown aside in the destitute and telling people about Jesus Christ and making that your priority, everything else 
is going to be added to you. Yes, you can still go to work and do the things you need to do, put yourself in the, for the promotion. But sometimes people not seeking God to see, God, is this what you want me to do? They just do these things and God's got to catch up. So no, you're not going to experience the power of God. You're not going to know anything about putting him first and watching everything happen after because that's not happening in your life. You're doing it. He's just sitting by and letting you do it because you ran off and left him a long time ago. The world and, and Christians, a lot of Christians and preachers today have made themselves the focus. They have bought these great big houses, great big cars, all these things at the expense of the people. Some people may say, oh, Christians are poor or, or you know, black people are poor and whatever. So I, 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 I beg to differ because a lot of the, the money from a lot of these uh, designers and, and hair and nail places and churches, let's just stick to the church here, comes from black people. But what happens is the church, many churches, has done away with how God wanted how wanted wealth to be distributed. It means everybody takes care of everyone. No one is without. The reason why many preachers can become wealthy, and I'm not addressing those. Some have their, you know, they have their own, they write their books. They have their own platforms in which that they, in which they're raising their money. But at the same time, they're still getting what I would consider residual income because people still send them money. The reason why a lot of preachers are wealthy is because people are giving them the money. So they don't lack but the way God had it was not that it should go to one pot and to one source. But if everybody was coming together and helping each other out, those to our left and to our right, and not people that we think is going to benefit us, everyone will be wealthy. Because if you read in the Old Testament, that's how God had everything set up. That even though when the children of Israel, they got their first fruits and all that good stuff. Guess what? He wanted them to enjoy it. It did not just go to the priest. It, he, cut, he dealt with everyone from those who were poor. He took care of the priest, the poor, the widowless, the foreigner. He did all that. The stranger in their land. God did all of that. But what's going on today is everything is going to this man, this woman of God, right? And everybody else, I guess they just peon so they, they don't get anything so a lot of times there's pressure on the people of God you see people sit and talk about tithes and offering all day when tithes and offering time come it's like oh my gosh like you know they're sticking bamboo shoots under your fingernails talking about tithe for a good 15 20 minutes and telling you why you're gonna die if you don't pay it you know and i'm like that's not true and some people may say oh i mean i'm not against it but what i'm telling you is it's because people will take that money and use it for themselves a lot of times that's what's going on so people are not seeing the power of god the anointing of god things like that it's not because god is not capable he's just not moving that way in your life and if you check it out, you're going to find out it's because there are areas that you have, you don't believe, areas in which you are not submitting to the Lord, areas in which you've gone before the Lord and did what you wanted to do, areas in which you changed the vision that God gave you to please man, area in which you decided you wanted to do whatever you want to do no matter what. And so you're working for it and then you try to whoop on people so they can get along and give you what you want. It's not yours and nothing you do will succeed as long as God is not first and foremost. You have to put the kingdom of God first. You still have to do the things of God says, if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. God does not tell you to chase down wealth. God does not ch tell you to chase down positions. He talks about that specifically in the Bible. Nowhere would you find that. But anyway, guys, God is still powerful. God is still sovereign. God still works miracles. God still moves mountains. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's just that man is wavering and he does not truly believe in God. And he wants God to give him things so he can. He's not content with just doing things for God. I'm going to ask a lot of these fancy preachers a question. And even you just regular believers, when's the last time you just invited somebody to your house to eat? 
instead of just inviting who and who's and a, a pre-selected group of people, when's the last time you just had a poor person at your table to eat? When's the last time you did something like that? Instead of you, when was the last time you invited that, that regular person that don't look like nothing and just brought them to your house and not for show and not to tweet it, but really did that? A lot of people can't tell you the last time because they're hurrying off to run off to, you know, get treated by this person and that person and only their exclusive groups and cliques they're eating with and they have, you know, they hang around with, but they don't fellowship. You know, I visited a Chinese church and it was so different and a Korean church as well. And it's so different how they fellowship. I'm not saying no churches without their faults. But you know what? They get together and everybody sit together and eat together. The whole church. They don't know everybody in there. And they certainly didn't know me. But they welcomed me. We sat down and we ate together. And they came and wanted to know who I was. This is how it's meant to be across the board. But people set themselves up in such a way. A lot of today's leaders and a lot of Christians, you have clicks. And that's why you're not seeing the power of God. Because he's not going to move on your behalf as long as you're living for yourself. This is leaders and Christians all across the board. We all have to check ourselves. I have to check myself. We have to live a selfless life of putting God first, doing for others, serving others, reaching out to those who are poor and destitute and then God will add everything else to you all right guys don't forget to like share and subscribe I pray that you be blessed have a wonderful day peace out